the European Moto2 Championship took its most pivotal twist and turn of the year so far earlier on today, with a collision between Alex Medina and Yari Montea seeing the championship leader crash out on the warm-up lap of all things. It allowed Alessandro Zaccone and Nicky Tooley to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in one of the great European Moto2 battles over recent years, with, in the end, Zaccone pipping Tooley by less than a tenth of a second. Now it's time for Montea's revenge. The championship leader will start from fourth, knowing that he can't win the championship today. Whatever happens now, it will go down to the season finale in Valencia, but it's all about pride and getting himself back into the championship picture for Yari Montea. Yeah, we've got early drama, by the way, Jack. Chabi Cardaluce, just below us, is coming into pit lane again. So clearly a problem with his bike on the way down to the grid. So the rider who was due to start seventh on the grid and talk, of course, took his first podium earlier on today. We don't know yet whether he's going to be able to start uh, this second race, if he starts it at all. Here's what happened earlier on with, of course, pre-race drama in race one as well. Yeah, that was the biggest moment of race one and we'd not even got underway. Medina and Montea coming together and crashing out on the warm-up lap of all things, meaning that neither of them started a superb opportunity, one that comes around very, very, not very often, sorry, for the likes of Zaccone and Tuli as he tried to battle their way back into championship contention. Talking of the championship, Fermin Aldeguia had his worst day in the SOC 600 title chase after contact with teammate Alex Toledo saw him crash out. A disconsolate Montea would make his way back to the box where all he could do was sit and watch and I'm sure even he probably enjoyed the battle that would start to commence between Zaccone and Tuli. The pair of them looking for victory. Tuli, his first in 18 months with Zaccone ending his own 18 month winless streak yesterday. There was contact between the pair of them in the closing stages with somehow Nicky Tooley managing to stay on board his Moto2 machine. Unperturbed, he managed to get back onto the rear wheel and back in front of Zaccone before the Italian had a reply of his own to move back through. There was side by side once again as they went in towards turn seven. Zaccone running wide and allowing Tooley to take control of the race with the rain flags out. We then went into the final lap and the final chicane with a block pass from Zaccone in the end, proving pivotal. He was able to halt the run of Tooley down the back straight and hold on after turn 16 and 17, cutting the nose of the fin as they came towards the start finish line to take a brilliant victory, his second of the weekend so far. So now we take a look at the grid then for race two of the day. Uh, as we mentioned, it's a grid that looks like it's not going to involve Xavi Cardaluce. We'll come to him shortly, but we have seen him come down pit lane. The pit lane is now closed, um, so we feel like he may be having to take his place at the back of the grid if they can get that bike fixed. Here then is the double winner so far this weekend. We've already seen hat tricks this weekend for Zonta van den Goberg and Ethan Guevara. Can Alessandro Zaccone join them with three out of three? He had to work very, very hard for both wins. It was Montea, of course, uh, launching a late challenge and a late bid to beat him yesterday. Tuli literally threw everything, including the kitchen sink at him earlier on today, to no avail. What will they have by way of response for Zaccone this time? Can he complete the hat trick? Well, you'd have got very good odds on an Alessandro Zaccone hat trick of wins coming into this one. Let's not forget that coming here to Aragon, Yari Montea had won six in a row, a record breaking run of victories in the European Moto2 class. He was the odds on favorite to go and take victory here once more and wrap up the championship as well. But how things can turn and change with now Montea less than 20 points clear, just 18 of Nicky Tooley for our final race of the weekend. There is, is that Xavi Cardalus? I don't think it is, That's no. the 44 of August. Kevin August as well. So we've got two riders in in Connor Funk, the American also is showing on our timing screens as a DNS does not start. So we could have a rather depleted grid by the looks of it earlier on today. Of course, he had a crash earlier on. Uh, so it looks like they've either not got the bike fixed or the rider is in no shape to continue. Either way, there will be no Connor Funk uh, on the grid this afternoon. Nicky Tooley then starts from the outside of the front row. He lines up in third position. And just look at that consistency. He's now the only rider that can turn around and say that, that he's been on the podium in every single race. Unfortunately, there's no ones in that list of results. It's all twos and threes, and you could see in part of me after that race earlier on today, how annoyed Nicky Tooley was at having been beaten to the line uh, in a photo finish, essentially, with Alessandro Zaccone. 
But he is back in championship contention. As we mentioned, he's just 18 points off the lead. Two races still to come in Valencia. So the championship now cannot be decided today. The challenge for Thule is to try and close in as much as he can in this afternoon's race. The challenge, of course, for Montea is to try and set up a championship clinching moment in Valencia in two weeks' time. The lead is 18 points. He'll be looking to extend that with still 75 yet left to go. What appeared at the start of this weekend as if it was going to be a march towards the title for Montea, he's now got to suddenly play the uh, you know play the defensive game again and get back on it because Thule is within touching distance. Yeah, needs to bounce back here, this Yari Montea. I didn't think I'd be saying that. A man that's won six races, finished second in the other one, and he certainly had to work for that second place finish on Saturday as well after moments involving Kevin Kubo and one involving Nicky Thule as well. But he eventually battled his way through to second. So I won't be surprised if we see Montea a bounce back we saw the likes of david alonso in the european talent cup yesterday bounce back from disappointment so i wouldn't be shocked if montea does the same here a brief glimpse there of alex toledo the stock 600 man he's looking for a hat trick of his own as well picked up the opening victory of the weekend in a super stock 600 class yesterday and managed to match that once more here comes pierpong boonler so so what are you going to do there mate you're just going to dive up the inside of him right yep Good idea, right? He's got it all under control as Pira Pong Boonler. And uh, I'm not going to argue against him as well because he's a pretty good Muay Thai boxer. So whatever he says goes as far as I'm concerned, Lewis. Yeah, he's provided with a spoiler alert, hasn't he, as how his race is going to go. So we'll see if he can uh, follow up on that promise as they go down into turn one later this afternoon. Yeah, he had a very, very strong ride earlier on today. Got the better of his... Uh, uh, well, he actually just got pipped at the post base teammate. Well, they were running together in fifth and sixth. Boonler was actually running ahead of Kubo at one point in the race earlier on today, but they ended up finishing fifth and sixth, respectively. Um, we're looking now at the Apex Cardoso racing. This is, this, uh, we've been told this is uh, Xavi Cardoso, whether he's back on the grid or not, we shall see. I don't believe that's him. I believe that is Medina, who is starting in eighth position. So we have gone past Cardoso. I'm assuming he's still in pit lane. I believe he hadn't made it back out when the pit lane closed. Uh, so he's going to be out on track. If they've got that bike fixed, they'll be able to take to the track at the start of the warm-up lap and then line up at the back of the grid in what will essentially be 20th position. Medina, of course, well, he didn't make it to the start line either in uh, the race one earlier on today for very, very different reasons, going down on the warm-up lap with Yari Montea. So we'll wait and see uh, if they can avoid the same sort of problems in this race. And we'll, of course, still keep an eye on the situation down below us in pit lane if Chami Cardaluz indeed makes it out for race two. Yeah, just looking out onto the grid at the moment, and there is no Xavi Cardaluz there. There is an absent space in P7 at the moment. But as I look down pit lane, can't see the bike either, although there's someone just brought a starter motor out. Are they about to wheel the 18 of Cardaluz out of the pit box and start it up? I can't Cause see. Because it could be Kevin August's bike as well that they're uh, trying to start up. We'll have to keep an eye on that, see which bike gets up and running. I think he's further up the pit lane is the German's bike at the moment. We have got two bikes in pit lane, just waiting to see. No, they're bringing the starter motor back in towards the bike. We'll have to let you know. I'll keep my eye on it. He's running out of time now because the one minute board has gone up. Off come the tyre warmers. In less than 60 seconds time, they'll be on their way and on the warm up lap. If he wants to start from the back of the grid, he'll have to leave from pit lane for the warm up lap. Otherwise, if the red light goes on and they're already on their warm up lap, it will be a pit lane start for Xavi and Cardinal. Not, not what he would have wanted after picking up a debut podium less than a few hours ago. Yeah, how the fortunes change for uh, Xavi Carlos. He was overjoyed earlier on today with that podium. But as it stands at the moment, he's not going to be starting at all. We'll keep an eye on it. Here is the grid lineup. Uh, Carlos will no doubt appear on this graphic, but keep in mind, he will not take up his seventh place on the grid. Starting from pole position for the third time this weekend is Alessandro Zaccone gunning for a hat-trick of wins. Kevin Kubo and Nicky Tooley join him on row one, with row two involving our championship leader, Yari Montea, Alex Toledo and Pira Pong Boonler. Row three, Xavi Carlos the lose will not be there plus then we see the likes of Alex Medina and Tiger Harder. Fermin Aldeguer looking to go a little bit further than he did later on today when he met trouble at turn two. He starts 10th ahead of Aaron Noradin and Mark Luna. Sam Wolford's 13th ahead of Ishizuka and Leon August with Rato, Shiba and Zeti on row six. 
the final row of the grid won't have Connor Thunk. He is a DNS, is the American. And more drama in row three of the grid. Now Alex Medina's been wheeled off. So poor old Tiger Harder is on row three all by himself. A shake of the head from Medina. The number five won't start from the second row of the grid. At best, he's looking at a back of the grid start as well. But that looks unlikely because they're off on the warm up lap. And he hasn't got the bike going just yet. I'm looking down to our left, to the bottom of pit lane, where there's only one bike there at the moment. That looks to be, from a very, very long distance, the number 44 of Kevin. No, it's not his car loose. There we go. Superb. Well, that just proves that my vision is <laughs> terrible. Spec savers on Monday it will be, but it's car loose that's got going, as has Medina as well. So the pair of them roll out of pit lane now, start the warm-up lap, but they will start from the back of the grid. It will be Tiger Harder there all on his lonesome. Yeah, the warm-up laps haven't been kind to Alejandro Medina today, <laughs> have they? That's twice today now that he's gone, he's essentially pulled onto the grid at the end of the sighting lap, and then his race has gone wrong before he's even made it to the start lights. That's twice now. Earlier today, of course, he tangled with uh, Yari Montea. Now, the bike didn't get going. Whether he stalled it or whether there was some sort of problem, we don't know, but either way, he is now back out on track. The back of the grid is going to be pretty busy. Carl Deleuze and yeah, Alejandro Medina are now going to be lining up at the back of the field, keeping Kevin August company. And remember that the pair of them are a regular top five finishers. Alejandro Medina has only finished outside of the top five on one occasion this year, and that was at the first race of 2020. Meanwhile, Cardaloos has been on the podium once already. That was earlier in the day, so the pair of them will be charging their way through. That is wrong, that championship picture, because it's not as comfortable as what it looks there for Yari Montea. He's not 43 points clear. He's, in fact, just 18. Yeah, indeed. They've given him 25 points already for this race. So uh, Monte will be hoping that that does indeed prove to be true and then he can get back on track after, uh, well, we don't know. We, don't, we never saw the incident, but we got the impression that it was through not a fault of his own earlier on today because he appeared to be gesturing in the direction of Alejandro Medina at the end of that warm-up lap. But anyway, that's Walter under the bridge now. Monte will be looking to try and get back on track here. He did have good pace yesterday at the end of the race. He took a little bit of time to get through the pack. He's certainly not taking his time to join the grid. He's uh, Anyone who remembers Romano Fanati's famous scene from Magella when he was on the grid with no one to join him. Yeah, it looks like Yari Monte is doing that at the moment. You could see Zaccone now pulling into view, but there, doing his stoppies on the grid. Monte, well, he's getting a little bit impatient for the race to get underway. He's taking no chances this time around, is he? He's not wanting to get involved in anybody's <laughs> incident this time on the warm-up lap. He's hit the front, he's motored his way around, he's got his place on the grid, which is one better than what he was able to do earlier in the day. So that's the first tick on the checklist for Yari Monte. The next one is fight for victory and try to ease your way towards the 2020 championship crown. A few other people that want to get in the mix as well, most notably Zaccone, Kubo and Tuli on the front row. We had Zaccone and Tuli go toe-to-toe -to -toe earlier today. What we're going to see now is once again a great start from Nicky Tuli on the outside, but it will be the inside line for Alessandro Zaccone swoop across into turn one. And unsurprisingly, we've not seen a pole man all weekend not get the whole shot. That is just Aragon in a nutshell. Qualifying absolutely vital with such a short run down to turn one. One. Yeah, Tudy was very cautious into turn one there. He made a great start, as you say. Got a great launch off the line, but was very cautious and he allowed Montea to get right around the outside of him. Montea is now attacking Kubo as well to take second place. Montea, as I mentioned, came on very strong at the end of the race yesterday, but had left himself with way too much to do. He's not doing that this time. Tiger Harder, that looks like, going up the inside of Tudy. Now he's trying to take fourth place. Of course, he was the chief beneficiary of those two riders who didn't get off the line uh, to start the race. And Harder, Harder on the 23, he's already up to fourth. He essentially qualified ninth, but he started second. Seventh, Thule now trying to fight back. Well, Tiger's got the claws out earlier on, hasn't he? But so has Thule, showing that he can bear his teeth at times as well as the Finn manages to get back in front of the Japanese rider. That would have been a disappointing opening lap, especially given that his two main rivals are away with it at the front. Zaccone leads from Montea, but for how long, though? Because here comes the 55, and for what is probably the first time this weekend, if memory serves right, Yari Montea hits the front of a Moto2 race. When we came here 
here on Friday afternoon. I didn't think I'd be saying that for the first time on Sunday afternoon. No, we'd barely seen him anywhere but the lead of a Moto2 race so far this season. But yeah, he's taking his time, but he's getting there now. And let's see if he can pull away from Zaccone. This is the first time that Zaccone's had to play catch up. Of course, he had uh, two deep behind him for so much of the race earlier on today, and he was able to fend him off in the end. But Montea is making a very decisive early break in this race. We've got Tuli now trying to rebound and come back at Kubo. There he goes into third place. He's dispensed with Tega Harder. Now he's up into third place as well. Maybe he's seen Montea hit the front and realizes he has to go with him. Strong start, by the way, for the two guys who had poor warm-up laps. Uh, Javi Cardalus is already up to ninth position from the back of the grid. Medina came through the last checkpoint in 12th. As they cross the line now at the end of the lap, Medina is indeed in 12th place. But Xavi Cardalus should have started on the third row. Or should have, yeah, should have started on the third row. He's essentially where he would have started. He's up in ninth already. Yeah, great start from the Andor. And it just makes Frank Lavaro's race from earlier even more impressive because both those guys started from 19th and 20th on the grid because there's only 20 guys out there with our to start from 22nd makes it even more incredible but I won't spoil that one as that's Pira Pung Boonler that's gone down the tie rider was indicating exactly what he's going to do and well perfect bit of parking <laughs> from the bike as well that's brilliant little bit of parking from the Master Camp VR46 bike it just perked itself quite tidily quite nicely up against the barrier the lads can load that into the van and get themselves back home they can Tuli meanwhile has gone on the attack he's now taken Zaccone so Zaccone down to third now it's not going his way at the moment as he goes and sets for a hat trick. But the two championship challengers are now one and two in the race. Montea leads from Tuli. And Tuli, of course, he's uh, not had to battle really with Montea much this weekend. He said he didn't have to see him this morning because Montea never even made the start. But Tuli, sick of finishing second, he's now setting his sights on the championship leader. He absolutely is sick of finishing second. He's so, so fed up is Nicky Tuli of either having to follow the 55 home or the 61. Meanwhile, there's Kemin Kubo on a charge. The tie rider finding a little bit more joy this afternoon than he did this morning as he dives up the inside of Zaccone, but he ran wide and allows the 61 hour two time race winner this weekend back in front. And Zaccone has to be a little bit careful there. He can't allow Kubo to continue slicing up the inside of him, otherwise, the leading two will be able to get away. But it looks as though he's managed to get that situation under control and he'll start to chip away to close back in onto our leading two. Yeah, Nora did and Medina continue, uh, sorry, yeah, Cardalus and Medina continue to make progress. Cardalus is now up into seventh place. He's just behind the leading stock 600 runner of Alex Toledo as they go across the line now. Cardalus is just two tenths behind him and Medina is now up into ninth position. He's just got ahead of Fermin Aldeguer. But Nicky Tooley looking very, very threatening on the back of the Arimonte. The fastest lap of the race, as you can now see on screen, a 155.9. Only rider that lap in the 55 couple of tens faster than Montea out in front. Just to give an indication of what sort of a, a level these guys are at, the lap record of 153.9. That was set by Edgar Pons two years ago. Of course, these guys all still running the Honda Motor Moto2 machines, whilst we're now into the second year of the Triumph 765 engined Moto2 World Championship. So in terms of development, these guys, if anything, have gone backwards. There's been no real strides forward because all of the leading chassis manufacturers, Calyx and Speed Up that we're seeing at the front here, have obviously averted their attention over to the Triumph 765 engine in a bid to try win the World Championship, something that Calyx are doing a pretty good job of at the moment. Yeah, they have. And this is a this is a sight that we're not used to seeing in Moto2. Of course, we're used to seeing Ari Monte lead the race, but we're used to seeing him clearing off at the front of the field once he hits the front. But he's, if anything, got a queue of riders behind him that are looking like they're faster at the moment. Nicky Tooley, who has spent all of his day staring at the back of a bike. He spent all of the, the first race staring at the back of Alessandro Zaccone's bike. This time, it's Yari Montea. Tooley will be keen to get in front as soon as he can because Zaccone who looked like he was struggling earlier on in the race. He was obviously battling with Kenneth Kubo. He now looks to have regrouped. Here comes Tuli then as he pulls alongside Yari Monte, but no way through just yet uh, as they go into turn 16. But we've got four riders up at the front. Tiger Harder is just about in touch. He's half a second off the back of this group in fifth. And um, we'll see him, no doubt, as they come out of the final corner. Here they come. Harder just slightly detached from that group. And then a big gap at the moment to Carter Luce, who's now fought his way through to the front of the second group in sixth. Fastest lap of the race that time round. Kenneth Kubo, a 155.6. Great ride from Kubo, and I tell you what, we've got to give a mention to Tiger Harder as well, the AGR rider. This is actually his first FIM CV Repsol round at 
Matt Aragon. He's had a couple of tests here about two weeks ago to get acclimatised with the circuit, but he only joined the European Moto2 Championship for the final three rounds of 2019. Previously battled it out in the Asa Road Racing Supersport Championship and the All Japan Superbike Championship before switching his hand over to the Moto2 machine. So the fact that this is actually his first race weekend at Aragon, he's doing a brilliant job, has slowly but surely progressed throughout the weekend, and now he's on the tail of our leading quartet. Brilliant ride coming in from the Japanese rider. Tuli is looking very, very impatient on the back of the uh, championship leader, Yari Montea. As we've mentioned already, he spent a lot of his uh, weekend running in second place behind somebody. He just wants to see some empty tarmac in front of him for once because he, he has the impression that he can go faster. Here he has a look at the inside. This time, can he get through? No, he can't. He's just not got that speed on the brakes to get up the inside of Yari Monte, who just swoops around the outside of him. Sakoni a little bit wide, but he holds third place with Kubo right behind him. And Hager, as you mentioned, Jack, he's running in fifth place at the moment. He's not quite able to match these leaders for pace, um, but he's still comfortably clear of Chavi Cargalus, who's running in sixth. Yeah, this is a great learning f uh, exercise for Tiger Harder to be able to be in touching distance of the top four riders in Moto2 so far this weekend. Anyway, he'll certainly loan an absolute boatload. At the front, though, still Montea leading Tuli, Zaccone and Kubo. And this is a, an important race for Tuli. He knows that at long last he has to try get the better of Yari Montea. He's not going to do it like that, going the car park route through turns 16 and 17. But it's been a, a pretty disappointing year so far for Nicky Tuli. To say that about a man that's not finished off the podium once, it seems a little bit odd. But when we look at his exploits in the Moto E World Cup, it's been a nightmare year for him. He's had a best of 11, currently 7 Team in the World Cup. He's the history maker. He's the inaugural winner of the race at the Saxon Ring about 12 months, 15 months ago. And he's gone backwards in that series since then. From a man that looked like contending for the championship in 2019, suddenly he's absolutely nowhere and he's second last. Yeah, he's had his fair share of injury problems, hasn't he, over the last uh, 12 months or so because he had that bad crash uh, at Valencia last year, but also a crash at Mizano in the Moto E World Cup. So he's uh, he's had his fair share of problems, which you know you could argue are down to bad luck with injuries and such like. But yeah, he's a uh, fighting fit here, and he's all over the back of Yaron Montero. I think that moment down at turn 16, he was trying all sorts of interesting lines to try and line up a move on Yaron Montero, and just got it all wrong. He just went too far out wide through the final uh, double apex left hander, and just ended up out way out and essentially as you say going the car park route here he comes once again once again on the run to turn 12 he's showing the nose but once again unable to get it inside of Montea this is an all too familiar feeling it's deja vu for Yuniki Tuli earlier on it was uh, Alessandro Zaccone who just would not give an inch this time Montea is making no mistakes out front and Tuli waiting to pounce yeah, if it's not Montea, it's Zaccone at the moment. The Tuli just can't seem to get the better of. And we're talking about Yari Montea. 18 points clear in the championship. With things staying as they are, he will be 23 clear. With just two races left in Valencia. I'm sure he'll be hoping to find himself on the World Championship grid in 2021. Remember that the winner of last year's championship and the runner-up of last year's championship, both Edgar Pons and Hector Garzo, were able to find themselves seats on the 2020 grid. I mean, he's with the Speed Up family at the moment. I would have said coming into this weekend, he may well have have a chance with the likes of Di Gian Antonio and Navarro not living up to the expectations so far, but they both bounced back brilliantly in Barcelona with Di Gian Antonio on the podium and Navarro right in the mix as well. So that may well make life a little bit more difficult for Montea. Meanwhile, in the battle for third, Kubo has got the better of Zaccone. Yeah, Kubo got a good run down the main straight and just backed in into turn one up the inside of Zaccone, who's not used to being as low as fourth, but that's where he finds himself now with Kubo up the inside of him and taking that final podium position at the moment. Tudy can continues to swarm all over the back of Yari Montea. Elsewhere, fastest man on track that time around was Chavi Cardalus, who's uh, made good progress on the back of it. He's now in sixth place. He's closing in at half a second a lap on the back of Tiger Harder, so we'll have a battle for fifth place between those two very shortly indeed. Whether he's got the pace to make much of a dent in the leading four, I'm not so sure. He's faster than them, but only by a tenth of a second. Just getting a little bit darker here as well. And don't want to say it again because we've already had rain issues throughout the day, most notably in the Moto2 race. But as you might be able to see on the pictures here, the sunshine is just starting to fade away a little bit. We're obviously at quarter past three now, local time here in Alcanix in northeast Spain. So the sun will be starting to set, won't be glaring high in the sky as it has done earlier in the day. But whether that drop in temperature may well affect proceedings here, we'll have to wait and see. But one man that's on a charge here is disposed of Zaccone. 
Coney, and he's right onto the rear wheel of Nicky Tooley. What a ride this is coming in from Kevin Kubo. Yeah, and if anything would uh, sort of increase the urgency for Nicky Tooley, it would be the sight of Kevin Kubo closing in behind him. So let's see if Tooley's now going to choose the moment to have a go at Montea. Once again, he pulls out from behind the speed up, but cannot get alongside him and cannot get past him. So uh, still Montea holds the lead. I think it's pretty clear now. If he had the pace to get away from this group, he might have done so by now. But the top three are breaking clear of Zaccone, who doesn't seem to have the pace that he's shown earlier on this weekend. Not sure what the issue is for Alessandro Zaccone, but this isn't the same Zaccone that we saw on Saturday afternoon and on Sunday morning. He may well be just finding a second wind now. Meanwhile, someone that definitely does have a second wind is Kevin Kubo. Ten laps remaining here with Aragon, and the fastest lap of the race has gone the way of that number nine there. The Master Camp VR46 machine of the tie rider is on a charge at the moment. Yeah, and that pace was actually matched by Cardalus in sixth place, who's continuing his charge through the field. He's now eight tenths of a second behind Tiger Hardu, who responded with his own personal best, but again, he lost another three tenths to the Andorran behind him. So Cardalus continues to close in as Haga does his level best to defend fifth place. Back at the front, Montea still leads it. He's still lapping in the 155s himself, as is Thule, but they now have the unorthodox, exciting and flamboyant tie, Kenneth Kubo, right behind them. And we know from what we've seen so far this weekend, Danny Need at Jerez, that Kubo needs no second invitation to have a go. Whenever Kevin Kubo is involved, one thing is guaranteed. It is absolutely box office stuff. Just wait for Kubo to attack, because when he does, it's going to be worth watching. Meanwhile, Montea continues to lead the way here. Thule stalking him once more. It's a completely similar race to what we saw earlier on today with an Italian followed by a Finn. It's a different Italian at the front, but the manner in which he's going is very similar. Meanwhile, you'll be able to see just at the back of your picture there, there's Tiger Harder and there's Chavi Cardalus as well. The Andorran, having started from the back of the grid, is now right onto the tail of Tiger Harder and looks like moving through into fifth very shortly. Yeah, Zaccone looks like he's responded on this lap. He's setting some very fast sector times indeed, so he's maybe... Uh, maybe he had a poor lap, of course, when Kubo came past him. And he looks like he's getting himself back on terms with this leading trio again. Across the line he go. We'll have nine laps to go as they cross the line this time. So we're still approaching half distance. And this is the battle for fifth position as Thule getting it all crossed oh. up. And Kubo running wide now. There's the mistake. There's the mistake from Kemin Kubo. Got it all crossed up. Got it oh, sideways and Harder's Harder. gone down. And I think Cardaloos as well. Loose. Yeah, the pair of them have gone down. Because I didn't see Cardaloos come through the picture. They have. They've both gone down. Chavi Cardaloos and Tiger Harder have gone down together in the fight for fifth place. That's at turn one. Cardaloos is clearly beaten up as a result of that one. He rolls over onto his back. Hopefully he's OK. It's great to see Harder running towards his stricken AGR machine. But what an eventful couple of moments that is. Hart Kubo runs wide and allows Zaccone through to third place and he loses any hope for the meanwhile, that is, of a podium finish. And suddenly we've got both Harder and Cardaloos on the deck at turn one, two. Yeah, despite what that graphic says, it's not sure involved in Haga Harder it is and in fact uh, Harder and Cardaloos as Cardaloos thankfully is now back on his feet I, I do wonder we haven't seen it since they will hopefully catch a replay of it shortly but as they cross the line Cardaloos was just under two tenths of a second behind Tiger Harder so you you'd have to think that Cardaloos has had a go into turn one and perhaps got it all wrong and tagged the uh, number 23 of Harder in front of him. Confirmation, those are the two riders out of the race. That promotes Alejandro Medina from the back of the field up into fifth. Uh, Alex Toledo is now running sixth overall in the race on the top Superstock 600 runner ahead of Adam Norodin. Sam Wolford, who finished eighth earlier on, is back up into eighth ahead of Ishizuka ninth. And Fermin Aldeguia, who of course crashed very early on in the race earlier on, he's completing the top 10 as it stands at the moment. Well, just like that, our race has been splintered because Kubo has dropped back to fourth. He's now a country mile away from our leading duo, who at the same time have pulled the pin and decided now is the time that they're going to start putting some rubber down on this track and edging further and further clear in the fight for victory. Zaccone at the moment can't live with it, and it looks like we're going to have a Montea versus Thule battle for the victory. Here comes Thule, no way through there, despite the leg coming out and dangling its way out of sideways. He can't find a way through. It's still Montea that leads the way with a new fastest lap of the race, a 55.5, but 
it was matched by Thule. Yeah, there's nothing to choose between them. The championship battle is on at the front. Look how close Thule is. You wouldn't believe that Monte was the fastest man on track. He looks like he's holding Thule up. Thule he's climbing all over him as they go through the fast turn three and four. But no way through the moment. It's the story of Thule's day so far. This man, the story of his weekend, has been just flat out success. He's won the two races we've had so far, but he does not have an answer at the moment for that incredible pace of Monte and Thule in the mid 155s. Sacconi cannot match that so far. Kubev's out of contention now as well. That mistake into turn one has completely messed up his rhythm. He was in contention and looking a likely lad to be able to jump onto the podium, but that is not the case anymore. It looks like he's down to these two. Seven and a half laps remaining of Aragon, our final race of the day. And it looks as though we've saved the best till last with Tuli and Montea with the championship on the line as well, throwing everything at each other. Yeah, it's the first real head-to-head -head that we've seen between these two in the championship. We did see a battle between them uh, a couple of battles at Estoril, but that was really more a case of Montea biding his time. And of course, in the first race, he had to come from seventh on the grid because of a grip penalty, and he, he beat Tuli fairly easily there. Since then, at Portimao and at Jerez, Montea just had the front of the race all to himself. This time, far from it. He's got a real dogfight on his hands and a highly motivated Nicky Tuli, who's looking to try and end a record this season of six second places and a couple of thirds. He wants the top step of the podium badly. That is absolutely guaranteed and it's going to be so interesting to see how Montea responds in this first head-to-head -head battle of the season. Every victory he's taken so far, he's won it at a canter, but it's going to be anything but that this time around. I thought Tuli was going to make his way through to the lead there, but Montea was stronger on the brakes and holds on through turn number one. It looks like a matter of time, though, before Tuli is able to finally edge his way through on the 55. Yeah, Zaccone improved his pace that time around, but he was still a 10 slower than his leading two. Let's see if Zaccone can and just get, get, get itself back into the rhythm, just closing in the second half of this race. Seven laps to go, and uh, let's see what he can do, because at the moment, he is 1.3 seconds adrift of the leading duo. Elsewhere, Kubo now has fourth place all to himself, and he's, uh, he's still lapping slower than the three ahead of him, so I think his hopes for a podium now rest on some incidents up ahead of him, with Alejandro Medina in a fairly comfortable fifth position uh, ahead of Alex Toledo. Although credit has to go to Toledo, the Spaniard on the Superstock 600 bike, he is staying nicely in touch with Medina in fifth, and he's good two seconds clear of Adam Noradine in seventh. Well, if he can finish in the top five on a super stock 600 machine, that is one of the rides of the day. Never mind whether it's Montero or Tuli that wins the race. On a stock 600 bike, regardless if a couple of people have crashed out in front of him, that is a superb performance. So let's see if he can manage to get himself in front of Medina as the laps tick by. At the front, though, it's still as it was with Montea leading from Tuli, but there's still nothing to separate them. Just a sheet of A4 paper between the rear wheel of Montea and the front wheel of Tuli. Yeah, we saw earlier on today, Tuli started getting inventive when he realised that the traditional sort of overtaking spots that you think of around here weren't working. We'll see how long it takes for his patience to run out this time as he's trying to draw alongside once again. But yet again, at the end of the streets, he's just not close enough. He has to be right alongside Monte really to make that move stick, and he just can't quite do it. Can he follow him down through turn one and get a run and a slingshot onto the main straight? Nothing to split between them as they come across the line once again. He's right on the tail of him, but once again, he'll pull out alongside him. But can he get up the inside? This time, he might well have done it. Has he managed to get the bike stopped into turn one? He runs ever so slightly wide, but Montea has to slot him behind. Tuli hits the front. Well, there we go then, a change of the lead for the first time in this race. Montea has got to stare at the rear wheel of Nicky Tuli for one of the first times this season. How will he respond now with only six laps remaining? There's Kubo back in fourth place, a lonely fourth. He will look like matching his best ever result if it can continue as he is. This is going to be a replay of his mistake. Is it into turn one? Yes, it is. There goes Tuli looking up the inside and I think that may well have just caught the eye of Kevin Kubo and that's what sent him wide. If we continue on this shot, I would imagine very shortly we're going to see Cardalus and Harder fly past. No, we're not, but that is where they went down just moments after that incident. Kubo still sticking in fourth place, though. At the front, though, it's still Nicky Tuli leading the way. There he is with Montea now having to play second fiddle, stalking the fin as we go over the crest of turn 11, onto the brakes, into turn 12. The incident you mentioned between Harder and Carlos is being reviewed after the race, so clearly the stewards want to take a look at that. As I mentioned, we didn't get a look at it ourselves, but Carlos was running behind Harder at the time, and you'd imagine that an overtaking attempt has gone wrong. 
uh, into turn one for uh, Carlos, who had been riding very, very well from the back of the grid uh, to carve his way through. And he was going as fast as the leaders at that point. So unfortunately, uh, a potential strong result uh, for Carlos goes missing. And uh, a bittersweet day for him in the end, a first podium, but also a costly crash to complete the day. I tell you what, Nicky Tooley looks like he may well be pulling clear of Montea here. It was 0.4 of a second as we went through the half lap checkpoint. Montea has responded there and he's back with him, but it is still two or three bike flames as they come across the start finish line. Now down to one, now down to zero, and here he comes up the inside, no way through. That is not going to be the case whatsoever. He has not broken him just yet, but he is certainly up in the pace is Nicky Tooley, who was two tenths quicker than him that last lap around. Now only five remaining of Aragon with Zaccone. Well, we can't count him out just yet. He is two seconds adrift of Montea but if these two really do start going at it, then suddenly Zaccone will be able to suck himself right back into contention. Yeah, his pace has dropped off a bit, though, unfortunately, for Zaccone. He's doing mid-156s now, which is half a second slower than the leaders, who, whilst they're battling with each other, they're continuing to up the pace. Two he does the fastest first sector of the entire race so far. This is a concerted, this is a key effort from Tuli. He's trying to stretch Montero out. He's trying to push him and see what kind of pace he's got and see if he can go with him at the front. This is Tuli's advantage. This is Tuli's opportunity that he's been waiting for, essentially, all season long all the pain of standing looking up at someone else on the podium you, nine times out of ten it's been Monte but of course earlier today and yesterday he had to look up at the uh, the Italian of Zaccone who took his first couple of wins of the season this is Tuli's time can he take full advantage because if he can the championship would be well and truly alive going to Valencia. This is Tuli's charge for victory, and at the moment, Monteo is able to follow him step by step, nothing between them as we go through turns 14 and 15. Flick left there, get it onto the fat part of the tyre, and here we are down the start finish straight. You can tell that Tuli is trying because he was off track limits there. He needs to be careful he doesn't continue doing that, and we may well have himself a long lap penalty. That will be one warning of three, another two, and he'll be getting himself into a little bit of bother. He had a look over his shoulder as well, just to see how much that bobble had affected him. Despite going fastest through the first sector, it means absolutely nothing now because the last time they came across the start-finish line, it was 0.2, and it's now less than a tenth of a second. Yeah, that didn't work out for him as well. I wouldn't be looking behind him if I was you, Nicotilli. I'd just get your head down. There's only four laps to go. Just set your pace and see if Monte can match it. They're still lapping near the fastest lap that we've seen so far in this race. They're still in the 155s. They're a second a lap quicker than anyone else on track at the moment. Incredible pace. He's so, so good through there, is Tuli. Turns two and three. They super fast right handers. Every single time he's able to eke out four or five bike lengths over Monte. Monte is just not able to live with him through those fast right handers. As soon as we get into the more technical part of the track now, the hard braking, the stop start stuff as we go through seven, eight, nine, twelve, thirteen. Suddenly Monte is able to draw himself back in once again, but not as much this time around. Tuli has himself a little bit of an advantage there. Yeah, he pulled out three tenths of a second in the first sector alone on this lap, and you can visibly see see the gap between them has just increased as Thule is putting the hammer down as he goes in search of that first win of the year and what a boost this will be for him and for the Moto2 European Championship which looks like it could in the end go down to the wire. We came into this weekend talking about Montea's coronation potentially taking place in this very race this afternoon. As it is, his championship has never been under greater threat. It would be just 13 points heading into Valencia if things stay as they are. And who would have guessed that coming into this weekend? Montea was unbeaten. He was the record breaker, the history maker. But suddenly, Thule is dragging himself right, at, right into the hunt for this championship. Just 13 points separating them with two races to go. And it would be anybody's. Meanwhile, here's Medina still in fifth place. He's managed to draw himself away from Alex Toledo. Is there spots of rain on the camera lens as well? I don't think they were maybe just a little bit of remnants from our earlier showers today back at the front though there go the leaders in front of our commentary position fastest Th lap of the race to Nicky Tuli. he oh. has put the hammer down a 155.4 Montea was hardly slow he did a 55.7 but that may be the crucial lap that swings this race Tuli's way it's now three tenths of a second nearly four tenths of a second between them and we know how good Tuli is through this opening sector as well here we are through turn four he's already been able to arc out maybe another ten for 
as we've gone through turns two and three. Here we are at turn five. Monteo is looking to respond though, and he looks as though he has been able to respond because that gap is certainly not half a second now. If anything, it is less than 0.3, and he's put in his personal best first sector time just when it was needed. We've not seen Montea push like this all season. We had, to, we saw him having to try and pull out a late attempt to try and close down Zaccone yesterday, but this is the first time he's really had to give chase after the leader. And it's like the, the guy who he's having to, been leading home all season, Nicky Tulli, who's finished second to Yari Montea on four separate, five separate occasions this season. Five of his six second places were to the man who currently follows him. 66 leads 55. And as it stands, they're matching each other sector for sector. It is punch for punch at the moment between the two championship leaders and Thule, who's we, we've covered it. It's been well documented how much he needs this win. He's just two and a quarter laps away from it. It's not the all-out aggression that we saw earlier on today, but that's a key mistake. Running wide at turn 14, Thule has allowed Montea to draw himself back in. I was going to say that with an advantage like that, if it stays like that over the final couple of laps, then Montea will not be close enough to make a move. That mistake from Thule has brought him right back into contention. There's now nothing between them. We've soon to be just two laps to go here in Aragon. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on it as they come out of the final corner just to our right as we look out the window, just how close they are. You can see from the curb count that Montea is right on his wheel and Thule, after setting that fastest lap of the race, the last thing he would have expected to see was Montea still glued to his rear wheel. Slightly defensive line from Thule. Montea having a good look, a bobble on the front end for Thule as well. He is giving absolutely everything. Fastest lap of the race that time to Montea. Oh, it looks so out of shape from Thule there as he went into turn one. A big bobble, but he somehow still managed to get it to the apex and out of turn one. Here we are through turn four now, and again, turns two and three. T Nicky Tooley's friend at the moment, he's able to eke out a little bit more of an advantage. Into turn five, out of it we go. There are the team chatty speed up guys. They don't look like they've got any emotion on the face whatsoever at the moment. Certainly not as excited as me and you are, Lewis. Only one and a half laps remaining, out of turn seven, and still it's Tooley that leads the way with a gap which is just, just going to be enough at the moment. Montea is not close enough to make a move if things stay as they are. Two riders on the absolute limit. Montea responds to Thule's fastest lap with the fastest lap of his own. Thule responds with the fastest first sector of the entire race so far. On this, the penultimate lap, they are giving, they are throwing everything at each other and seeing if they can respond. This is an absolute head-to-head -head between the two champions contenders and Thule is stretching ever so slightly clear on this lap. He's only pulled out a couple of tenths, but in this stage, at this stage of the race, with what we're talking about, the fine margin between these two, two tenths is a lot. And look at the advantage he's pulled out. Montea will not be within range as they come into the back straight. Thule gets turn 14 exactly right this time. As they come into the back straight, he's well clear of Montea. The fastest third sector and the lead is out to six tenths of a second. We've seen Thule set a fastest lap. Montea responded with one of his own. And Thule might be about to put in a new fastest lap as they complete lap 15 of 16. Well, that could be the lap that hands Nicky Tooley his first win of 2020. He comes out to the final corner for the penultimate time, crosses the start-finish line, just 5.1 kilometres to go. There go the team waving him on, and it's another fastest lap of the race from Nicky Tooley, a 55.1, but Montea was only two tenths of a second behind, having set his own personal best lap of the race. This is it. These guys are giving it everything. They've just one lap to go and at the moment it's Thule's to lose because he's got himself three tenths of a second over his title rival. Yeah, Montea was faster than the original fastest lap but of course Thule had raised the bar just moments earlier and set his own personal best. Montea is looking like he's still a little bit closer, he's still just about in range. One mistake from Nicky Thule could cost him the race and of course a mistake at this point would only not only cost him the race but it will be a seismic blow in the Moto2 European Championship. They're both absolutely flying. Thule sets the fastest first sector of the race and that's immediately beaten by Montea. They are setting a fierce pace at the front and Montea is not letting this one go without a fight. He's back with him, I think. He's within touching distance. He's right on the edge, though. A move would have to be one hell of a lunge from a long way back, but he's just about close enough, is he? Turn 12 is where we've seen him make a move before. Out of the crest of turn 11, hard onto the brakes. He's not close enough. Instead of looking at these guys, let's see what's happening on track. And he's not close enough. So it is Nicky Tooley. Slightly wide through 12, though. Into 13. Still Tooley that leads the way. It's going to surely come down to the final corner. Big mistake from Tooley. And that allows Montea to close in even closer. If you, see, if you wanted to guess how hard they were pushing, there was a graphic demonstration of it. Tooley is giving this absolutely everything right on the edge.
of track limits as well. That could be crucial. Remember, you don't want to exceed track limits on the last lap because that could come back to bite you. Montea is giving it everything. He's just not quite close enough. He might try and find his way, follow through the final corner and see if he can get the drive out of the corner. But the run to the final corner, the finish line out oh, of turn 17 wide. is very close. There he goes. Montea has managed to squeeze his way through. He's left it so, so late. But Yari Montea takes victory here in Aragon and Thule has to settle for second once again. He left it late, but Yari Montea gets the job done. That is a huge, huge win in the chase to become the 2020 European Moto2 champion. Fastest lap of the race on the final lap from Yari Montea, a 155, 1111. And the very last corner of the race decides it just as it did uh, earlier on today. And yet again, Thule has to settle for second place. And that extends the championship lead. Montea now moves 23 points clear with just two races to go. And Nikki Thule, for the seventh time this year, has to settle for second. I think this might be the fastest cool down lap we've ever seen of Aragon. Nikki Thule is not messing about. He wants to get himself into Park Ferme, onto the podium, and back home as soon as possible because he will not be happy to lose out on the final lap at the final corner once again. Yari Montea, though, a championship ride from the 55 with a lap to go. He was six tenths adrift and out of contention, but he managed to pull it back in with a fastest lap of the race on the final lap a last lap last corner move to boot as well and that is win number seven at long last he's had to wait some time this weekend but he has finally reached seventh heaven in the 2020 moto 2 european championship third place as well a lonely one in the end for alessandro zaccone didn't get much mention throughout the race, but he's had plenty this weekend. One of his best weekends in his European Moto2 Championship career. Two victories, a third place as well. Plenty to be proud of on his way back to Rimini this evening. Fourth in the end, going to Kemin Kubo was a big stand-up wheelie from Yari Monte. I thought he was going to be able to bust one out all the way down the kilometre-long back straight, but unfortunately, just out the final corner, the front wheel slammed back down again. Here is probably the moment that cost Thule. The left foot off the foot peg, hanging off the side of it. That allowed Monte to close in just that fraction more. And as they went right and then left, through 14 and 15. He closed in Montea once more down the back straight before Thule trying to break as late as possible, just left enough room. There was barely anything there. Montea sits him up through turn 17, gets the run to the line, and one point, sorry, 0 0.160 separating the guys. Sees Montea take victory. Despair for the Stylo bike team as they once again have to settle for second. But delight for Team Chatty speed up. Montea back on top in European Moto 2. I think he's pretty happy, Yari Montea, because that is a not only seventh win of the year, coming back from what otherwise has been a uh, a frustrating weekend or certainly a frustrating day after being taken out we think without having seen the actual incident yet on the warm-up lap earlier on today but a seventh win of the year and he takes full advantage of a 10-point swing so the championship picture looks exactly like that heading to Valencia. It could have been 13 points and it could have been anybody's game going into Valencia. Now it is surely checkmate in favour of Yari Montea, 23 points clear. All he has to do is finish in front of Thule in our opening race of the weekend on October 31st in Valencia, and he will be crowned champion. Well, that is easier said than done. Zaccone not happy. He eventually finished 10 seconds off of the lead. I think he was moaning of a little bit of rear grip. And you can see Thule, look at the despair. He just hangs his head, leans it on the fuel tank. He gave it everything again, and once again, it just wasn't enough. If it isn't Zaccone, it's Montea. And Thule will extend his run of podium finishes, but I don't think that will be able to cheer him up. So Montea poses once again. That's a familiar sight in 2020. 
Not one we've seen all too often this weekend. He didn't take pole position. He didn't take victory in race one or two. But finally, at long last, in race three, our final race of nine this weekend. And what a nine races we've had, by the way, as well. I think all nine of them have certainly provided plenty of entertainment. And that was one of the better ones we've seen as well, with Montea leaving it late to pick up win number seven of the year. Now 23 <clears> points <throat> clear. It looks as though the championship is going the Italian's favour. Let's get his thoughts alongside Lewis. On today, that must be a very, very special victory. Just talk us through that last lap. Yeah, this is a special victory for me. This is, uh, I think, more important to... Uh, for this championship because uh, this week uh, was stranger. Yesterday in the race, uh, I chose the, the hard tire, but um, it's, uh, it, it's, it wasn't uh, good for, uh, for the track. Uh, and nothing. This morning, race one, I have a mistake with, uh, with Tulli because uh, he stopped his braking in the, inside the corner. Medin in, uh, behind you break and I bam. Uh, but uh, we are here and uh, I think it's uh, it's beautiful. And so what's in Italian? Eh, it's been a weekend uh, impegnativo perché ieri in gara ho, ho scelto la gomma dura e non è stata la, la scelta migliore perché a differenza degli altri perdà molto 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 in uscita di curva. E stamattina invece in gara Tuli ha frenato bruscamente, quasi da fermarsi, Medina dietro uguale, gli si è interessato tutto e io sono arrivato veloce e gli ho, pre ho preso Medina, mi scuso anche con Medina, però penso che la, la cosa più importante è stare qua ora e sono contentissimo, devo ringraziare il team perché nel, nelle difficoltà ne siamo usciti vittoriosi e questo è importante. Che caccia la scienza? His most important win yet for Yari Montea, according to the Italian himself. Number seven of 2020, and this is how he did it. Alessandro Zaccone started from pole position for the third time, and he looked as though he may well not get the hold shot for the first time this weekend with Kubo showing his front wheel. But Zaccone got the job done, as did Montea, this time having no issues on the warm-up lap to battle his way through to the race lead inside the opening couple of laps. Nicky Tooley was there once more and he eventually would edge his way past Alessandro Zaccone on the run down into turn eight. Kubo was up for the fight as well as he found a way past Zaccone at turn 14, but it was short-lived with the Italian back in front once again. Tiger Harder was in contention in the early stages with the Japanese rider looking for a career best finish inside the top five. Montea, the championship leader, did most of the running at the front though, with Tooley going with him. Then suddenly at turn one, a mistake from Kevin Kubo saw him drop out of podium contention. Meanwhile, Javi Carda loose and Tiger Harder had a coming together, seeing them both drop out of the race. It would leave these two to fight it out at the front. Nikki Tuli versus Yari Montea, our two championship protagonists, and they left everything out there. As we started the final lap, Tuli had over half a second on Montea, but the Italian was not giving up anything but a mistake from Tuli there on the exit of turn 13 gave hope to Montea his eyes lit up and as they flicked right and left one final time through 14 and 15 Montea would close in before then threading the eye of the needle picking up Tuli and being able to cross the line take the checkered flag and pick up win number seven of 2020 seventh heaven for Yari Montea and he extends his championship lead out to 23 points as a result Here's official confirmation of the results then, with just a tenth of a second separating Montea and Tuli as they cross the line. That's Tuli missing out by a tenth on Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon on both occasions having to settle for second. Zaccone, I think, complaining of a little bit of rear grip at the end, eventually 10 seconds adrift of Montea, despite being early contention, and a good ride from Kemin Kubo as well to bring it home in fourth place. The second time he's done that this week. Kent. A good ride coming from Alex Toledo on the Super Stock 600 as he continued to march further forwards in that Stock 600 class.
Shout out for Sam Wilford as well, who finished in seventh. That's his best result of the season so far. Yeah, brilliant stuff from Sam Wilford on his first ride with the AGR team. Made the move across from his own little outfit into the championship winning team. And it's working wonders having some experienced heads in that garage, helping the Brit to seventh. A great finish for him as he continues to build forwards in this European Moto 2 series. There you can see a couple of notable non finishers. Harder and Cardaloos have their own coming together at turn one. We've boomed crashing out on the opening lap off certainly in the opening stage I think it was of his bike perfectly parking itself up. Yeah, of course, you heard me asking the questions there in part for me. I can assure you, I gave Nicky Tuli a very wide berth. He looked absolutely <laughs> livid as he sat on his bike with his arms crossed for a long time. The earplugs were thrown out as well across part for me. He was absolutely livid. But interesting as well, you may have touched on this as I was on my way back from the uh, from the interview set, but Yaramonte is shedding a bit of light on what happened to him on the warm lap earlier on today with Nicky Tuli apparently uh, slowing down Medina caught out behind him and Monte left with nowhere to go. Yeah, I was trying to just work out exactly what happened, giving his uh, explanation. It looks as though Tuili really slammed the brakes on, and in a bit of a domino effect, so did Montea, so did Medina, and the pair came together with Tuli able to get away with it. But it won't bother him anymore. The issues of this morning completely gone now because he's back at home on the top step of the podium. Here comes Pedro Ribeiro. He's had a busy day today, hasn't he? Five races and had to hand out all awards. Certainly got his steps up on his Apple Watch, hasn't he? Motoring from side to side. There he goes, handing over the Superstock 600 Victor Trophy to Alex Toledo. The third one of the weekend for him. He wraps up a hat-trick, something that Zaccone couldn't do. Two wins, though, and a third. Certainly a great haul this weekend, one that I'm sure he'll look back on with fond memories. Tooley, meanwhile, unfortunately, finishes second again. Beaten by another Italian. This time, though, it's a more important one. It's the championship leader. It's Yari Montea, seventh heaven for the Italian. Win number seven of 2020, his domination finally back on track. Another check as well, this time going to Nicky Tooley. Oh, well, at least he's got something to smile about now. Has the Finn, 250 quid to help him on his way back to Imatra, Finland. But let's hear the Italian national anthem to close out the day. For the third time this weekend on a Moto2 podium, it's the Italian national anthem that roars out around Aragon. This Prosecco, and he'll have a slip of the tongue there, can spray on the podium. And it's good to see sportsmanship between all four of our riders on the podium, toasting what has been a excellent two days of racing here in Aragon. Nine races in total, four different winners, hat-tricks for Zonta van den Goorberg and Ethan Guevara in the European Talent Cup and Junior Moto3 World Championship. A double win for Alessandro Zaccone and importantly for this championship right here, a victory for Yari Montea, which means going into the season finale, just 50 points on offer in Valencia. Montea is 23 clear of Thule, with Zaccone still, still in with a very, very small chance of picking up the championship, 41 adrift. It's not over and done with yet, but it's certainly a very distant chance. Yeah, what a weekend we've had, as you say. We've had brilliant racing both on Saturday and Sunday. As you mentioned, hat-tricks for Van den Goorberg and Guevara. A crucial victory for Montea after a very difficult start to the day. And we head to Valencia with all three championships very much alive. If you've missed any of the action, you can catch up with it on the FIMCV Repsol official YouTube channel. All of the races and highlights will be put up there, as they will be on Twitter and Instagram as well. So make sure you give them a follow or a subscribe to be able to catch up on all of the action. 31st of October, 1st of November in Valencia. Make sure you're tuning in. Steve Inglis, 
Francisco Giles will be bringing you all of the action for our season finale. But from Aragon, from Jack Appleyard and from Lewis Sudderby, thank you for joining us. What a weekend we've had. Nine races, so much drama, so many incidents, so many high-pitched squeals from the pair of us. But it lends with Yari Montea on top as he marches towards the 2020 European Moto2 title. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in Valencia.